broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha and welcome to the special edition of Hiki no, coming to you from Hana K-12 school in the beautiful East Maui village of Hana. This is the final episode of the series of shows focusing on Hawaiian values. Each installment focused on a specific value and features story about the impact that valley has had on people's lives. Here are some of the Hawaiian values that we've highlighted so far. Ho'omau, to persevere, perpetuate and continue. Kuleana, or responsibility. Ha'aha, ha which means humbleness and humility. Imina oao, or enlightenment and wisdom. And ike pono, to know what is right. The Hawaiian value featured in this episode of Hiki no is ma lama, to care for, to protect, and to maintain. Our first story of ma lama is about an organization whose mission is to care for and protect our precious marine life in waters surrounding Hawaii and other Pacific Islands. Here, students from Aliamaru Middle School in the Salt Lake District of Oahu tell us about the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Pacific Island Fisheries Science Center. Under the Marine Mammal Protection Act and the Endangered Species Act, NOAA Fisheries plays a key role in the protection and stewardship of marine mammals. A top priority of NOAA is the protection of the Hawaiian monk seal, one of the most endangered mammals in the world. The latest records show that only about 1,200 exist in the world today. Unless everyone does their part, the monk seal will not be around for future generations. It would be a shame if the Hawaiian monk seal went extinct on our watch. Future generations wouldn't be able to witness them in the wild and enjoy their beauty and their presence. Just this morning, I assisted with transferring two Hawaiian monk seals that were brought to our facility here on Fort Island last night on an airplane from Midway up in the Northwest Islands uh, to transfer them to the Coast Guard station here at Barbers Point so they could be flown to a hospital over in Kona. And the goal is to, within about two to three months, put a, about 150 to 200 pounds on them and then send them back up to the Northwest Islands. Assisting the Protected Resources Division is the Office of Law Enforcement. They're the ones out in the field making sure that the rules are followed. So when people intervene with the local marine, marine wildlife, it's normally tourists and um, people who are trying to get close and take pictures, um, which is most times not a problem, but we have to remember that they're um, wild animals. And uh, just like you wouldn't want a wild animal coming into your house, we got to remember that we're going into their house, which is the ocean or the beach. And um, we need to remember to stay away and give them their space. There's a lot of ground to cover. And the responsibility of protecting marine life doesn't rest on the scientists and officers alone. We have volunteers who are out every day uh, looking at these seals, setting up seal protection zones or little outreach barrier areas that have signs that alert the public to the fact that there's a resting monk seal. Volunteers are trained by NOAA on what to do when they get the call to monitor a monk seal. We need to know what to do when we see a seal because prior to this program, I would not have known. I would not have known that you need to stay a certain distance away from the seal. I would not have known that seals come on shore to rest during the day. You know, I wouldn't have known any of that. Members of the community can show their care by contributing in different ways. The best thing you can do is um, volunteer in different programs, whether it be part of the Marine Mammal Response Program where you're on the beach every day helping to protect the monk seals or getting involved with invasive species removal or any of the other programs that we offer here at NOAA. Through these efforts, there is still hope that the Hawaiian monk seal will thrive once again. From Ayumaru Middle School, this is Malin M. Mendoza for Hiki Now. We're back at Hanake to 12 School in East Maui for a special edition of Hiki no, 
dedicated to the Hawaiian value of ma'alama, to care for, to protect, to maintain. Our school was established by Hawaii's Department of Education over 100 years ago in 1912. Today, it serves approximately 350 students from kindergarten through high school. Nearly 80% of the students are of Hawaiian or part Hawaiian ancestry, reflecting the native culture that has been continuously maintained in Hana for centuries. Our next story of Ma'alama is by students at Seabury Hall Upper School in the upcountry area of this island. It's about a man who leads painstaking efforts to care for and restore an island ravaged from decades as a target in military exercises. When they used to bomb it, like my grandpa said, like when he was little, they used to like stay up late and just like pretend it was like 4th of July practically. He'll just like light up in the sky. Where was your grandpa? Oh, uh, he was at McKenna. McKenna Landing. And like they used to watch it when they were little, like blow up. Koho'olawe, an island previously known for its vast and rolling pasture land, has been reduced to a desolate, barren island due to overgrazing and bombing. But there's hope. With the Koho'olawe Island Reserve Commission's reforestation team led by Paul Higushino, the island is slowly but surely being revegetated into the beautiful land it once was. Well, this past year, uh, we've been bringing about 400 uh, volunteers a year. Previously, we used to bring out about 800 to 1,000 volunteers, wow. but we got cut back uh, considerably. Uh, for our budget, we had to reduce our, our, our operating budget. And you know, when the uh, volunteers do come out here, you know, it's uh, who comes out here? It's school groups, um, elementary school groups, high school, uh, college groups. Anyone who gives us a call gets on our at least two and a half, three year waiting list. And Whatever needs to be done out here, you know, uh, mostly it's, you know, the restoration. We're trying to bring back the island to revegetate it. So a lot of it's planting, erosion control, alien plant control. But if someone is good with small engines, we have them working on our uh, chainsaws or our weed eaters. If someone's a carpenter, we have them have fixed things and, you know, so whatever needs to uh, be done, yeah. we try to put the volunteer or volunteers that yeah. pass would be most appropriate. And I think the people come out here and they look at the job and you know how daunting a task it is. And um, you know people say, how do you eat an elephant? You know, one bite of a, one bite at a time. How do you restore or bring back an island like Koalave, one plant at a time? This is Kyle Mackey reporting for Seabury Hall on the island of Koalave for Hikino. Our next feature focuses on the protection aspect of Ma Lama. Here, students from Kauai High School in Lihue highlight ways of protecting yourself and your home in the event of a hurricane. In this year alone, Hawaii has already been able to luckily avoid nine different hurricanes. However, regardless of this luck, it is always important to understand the five P's towards hurricane protection to ensure your safety in the event of an actual storm. The first step towards your protection is to pay close attention to your local news to be informed on the track and state of the storm. The second step is to ensure to pack your supplies. Store at least three days worth of food and water for each member of your household. In addition, make sure to store all necessary medications flashlights, first aid supplies, and a battery-operated radio. The third step is to pick your most important possessions, which may include important documents and special keepsakes. The fourth step is then to prepare your house before the chaotic winds. You may close up all windows and doors with plywood. The final step is to know your plan of action during a hurricane. Through these steps, you will develop better habits to protect yourself against future storms. Remember, you are not only limited to these forms of preparation because there's always room to do more. Keeping the community safe one step at a time. This is Casey Emoto from Kauai High School for Higino. We're back at Hana K-12 School in the East Maui village of Hana for a special look at the Hawaiian value of Malama to care for, to protect, and to maintain. For its more than 100 years of existence, our school has cared for the Hana community by serving as a gathering place where ideas are exchanged and lasting friendships are formed. By the same token, 
the village of Hana has cared for the students who attend our school. This relationship is expressed in our school motto, Kaike ake kulana kauhale apau he hei na ke kiki. The knowledge of the whole village is absorbed by the child. Our next story, illustrating the Hawaiian value of Malama, comes from Maui High School, where students show us how much a middle-aged woman has learned from caring for her mother, who is suffering from Alzheimer's disease. And you have to find humor in life, otherwise you can go crazy pretty fast. For Maui resident, Miss Martha Watkins, finding humor while caring for her mother keeps her sane. Such pretty hair, Mom. In 2010, 87-year-old Beth Snyder Watkins was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I just started noticing that um, she wasn't, you know, being as good about taking the pills. Um, she was forgetting things. There's areas that are affected by the disease that impair thought and memory. What we notice first is that it's a short-term memory. Alzheimer's, a form of dementia, kills brain cells causing loss of memory and unpredictable actions. She said things like, oh, that's such a nice battery on the top of that pole, or that man has a nice battery on his head. So <laughs> there are moments of, <laughs> of fun. After short-term memory loss and repetition, patients often regress back to their childhood. She's that teenager who wants her mom and dad. She wants to go home. And so not realizing that that home and her parents um, are past. As the disease progresses, their ability to interact with others worsens. The hardest part of the whole thing, um, besides just watching somebody so intelligent uh, lose <laughs> lose their ability to communicate. Uh, it was when she no longer knew who I was. So essentially, I lost my mother at that point. According to the Alzheimer's Association, there are 5.4 million Americans living with Alzheimer's. These numbers are expected to rise to 6 million by 2020. Get it, I get it. It's okay, let's keep that on so that you stay warm, Mom, because you're cold. Taking care of an Alzheimer's patient is difficult. Caregivers often feel guilt, anger, and stress. And to lighten the load, experts suggest a new way of looking at life. You enter their world. That's an important thing to say about Alzheimer's. You join their world. You don't try to make them adapt to your world anymore. Currently, there are no proven preventions or cures for Alzheimer's, but certain medications help slow down its effects. For the caregivers, finding comedy in life can help relieve some of the stress. If you can see the humor in a situation, it's a whole lot easier to deal with. And, um, yeah, it's very, very, very important to get those moments of happiness. This is Rachel Andrada from Maui High School for Hikino. <laughs> yes, you do. Our next story focuses on the to maintain aspect of Malama. Here are students from Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai, malama or maintain the traditional process of collecting salt that was practiced by their ancestors for generations. For many years now, in Hanapepe, 26 families on the island of Kauai have been making pa'akai, or better known as Hawaiian salt. How pa'akai is made is water travels underground into wells. The water is then taken from the well and moved into a holding bed. A holding bed heats the water before it's transferred into the actual bed. In the bed is where the salt crystallizes and forms different flakes. Making pa'akai takes a lot of time, so all the families need to work hard to get the job done. Traditionally, um, I, I, I find that we've been making the salt after uh, King Kamehameha Day, just around that time, during the summer when the sun is hot. The traditions that are passed down start from an early age. The lessons that they learn stick with them throughout their whole life, and they pass it on to their own children. Well, my aunt and uncle were with the Order of Kamehameha, and when he died, Auntie Annie asked me to come and join them in making salt, so I said, well, sure. 
I wanted to learn to do that anyway. The age range of people that work in the salt patch go anywhere from two years old. The two-year-olds, they kind of like make the mud balls and things like that, to old Kapuna who sit there and teach us how it was done when they were younger. So why don't they just buy salt in the stores instead of going through the whole process? The one you buy at the store is mined. The one we make is from ocean water. And plus, like I say, it seeps from outside in the ocean and it comes up even saltier by our wells. Salt in the so store has chemicals in it, so it's not as natural as what you would find in Hanapepe. Being able to take a part in this tradition is a fun and lucky opportunity. But what happens to all the pa'akai that they make? The reason why we make pa'akai in Hanapepe, and it's not sold and we just give it away, is because we love our culture. We love the fact that we get to stand in the exact same place that our grandmother stood or our grandfather stood and do the exact same thing that he did just because we love our culture. The people that take part in making pa'akai love what they do and are proud that they get to take a part in the same jobs as their ancestors. So whether they are a kapuna that is happy to pass down what they know or one of the young kikis who are just as eager to learn, they're all just thankful that they get to be a part of a rare activity and pass down many traditions. For you can know, this has been Kaylee Esposo reporting from Chivas Kamakahele Middle School. Welcome back to Hana K-12 School in the beautiful Hana Maui for a special look at our Hawaiian value of Maalama to care for, to protect, to maintain. Our next story comes from students at Waianae Intermediate School in West Oahu and shows that one way to care for students with special needs is to include them in the activities of the mainstream. <laughs> Basketball, soccer, working out on exercise equipment, and walking are forms of exercise which require physical fitness and coordination. But what happens when you have disabilities which affect participation in sports? At Waina Intermediate School, students suffering from the most severe disabilities are able to participate in a program known as Adapted PE. Adapted PE is a physical education class for students who have special needs. We play basketball and kickball, and we go to the fitness room and exercise and lift up weights. If it wasn't for the adapted PE class, probably my students would have a more difficult time adapting to a regular PE class. They have different disabilities that hinder their progress, and we in this class just help them to succeed in any kind of physical activity that they enjoy. Why is there a need for these students to have a separate PE class? When I was born, my mom thought I wouldn't make it. So the doctor put this shine in my head to keep the, to keep the fluid from my head. Say in Dane's case, if he was to get hit in the head by a basketball or if he was to fall and hurt his head, then it could present a, a life-threatening situation. A lot of my students, they have some type of uh, physical disability. That's one that has uh, his chest was crushed as a baby, so he has uh, some heart problems so he can't overexert himself. And, and that's the same with other students as well. We have several of our students who experience seizures to some degree and uh, it can be a moderate seizure, it can be a life-threatening seizure, so we always have to keep an eye out for that. Although the students like PE, they also want to feel accepted by their peers. They have the same expectations. Uh, they look forward to having new and better relationships with other students, as well as other adults on campus. And also they look forward to uh, you know, having the regular ups and downs that other students have. One of the components of the adaptive PE class is peer tutoring. Um, in this class, we have typically developing peers um, that act as peer tutors. And I think because we have those students in here, um, it makes it more fun. It makes it more um, typical, you know, just like a regular PE class. We view them as students who are in need of patience and guidance to help them become more physical, a physically able so they can be more successful and more fit. Having the adapted PE class allows these special needs students to have the same opportunities as other students. 
It gives them a chance to exercise while interacting with their peers. This is Lorraine Char reporting from YNI Intermediate School for Hikino. Our next story comes from students at Punahou School in the Manoa District of Oahu. It features a young man with a passion to malama a species whose existence, some would argue, is critical to the survival of life on Earth. Dakota Miller, a freshman at Punahou School, spends his time caring for over 30,000 bees, making him the youngest beekeeper in Hawaii. Well, a few years ago, in 2009, we met this guy at a farmer's market. Um, his name was Howard McGinnis, and he offered to take us out um, beekeeping. And we went out to his hives, and he showed us how to beekeep. And after a few times of going out with him to his hives, he then offered us a hive in our backyard, and we said, Sure, we'll take one, and that's basically how we got started. One of the benefits of beekeeping is, of course, the honey. You can often find Dakota and his father, Keith Miller, working side by side, harvesting their honey. To collect the honey, first we have to take the super off the hive, then we take the frames out, take the cappings off the frames, which is the wax of the honey, and spin out all the honey. And then we drain it out into a bucket and filter it and then we put it in bottles and we put the frames back on the hive for the bees to build more honey on. Most of the time we just sell it to family and friends but once a year we normally sell it at um, the Honey Festival which for the past few years has been at Santa Fong's plantation. Dakota's concern for Hawaii's dwindling bee population is a significant reason why he invests so much time and effort into caring for these bees. I'm concerned about the bee population in Hawaii because probably about 90% of the wild beehives in Hawaii have been killed off by either the varroa mite or the small hive beetle and uh, that's not good for the environment or crops. Bees pollinate almost two-thirds of our food crops and a lot of other plants that make up the forest. We're propagating bees by making more beehives and helping put more bees in our area because they can fly up to five miles in any direction from the hive, so that's a lot of bees to go around. When the bees need more space in their hive, they swarm and move to a new location with a new queen. Sometimes people don't want beehives in their house. They call an exterminator because they think the bees are going to attack them. So um, what we do is we come in, we save the bees and give them a new home and a safe place. Beekeeping makes me feel happy and I'm pretty proud of being the youngest beekeeper in Hawaii because it's an interesting thing and it's fun to beekeep and watch how your hives change and watching the bees grow. Although maintaining the hives requires work and dedication, for Dakota, protecting Hawaii's bees and helping to preserve their place in our ecosystem is his sweet reward. This is Elena Kobayashi from Punahou School for Hikino. Our next story of Maalama comes from students at Kamehameha School's Maui Middle in Pukalani and shows that sometimes to care, protect, and maintain means to rebuild one stone at a time. People are always searching for lost treasure. What if I told you there is a cultural treasure right in our backyard? There is an ancient Hawaiian fish pond, or loko i'a, located right in the heart of Kihe Maui. This loko i'a, named Ko Ie Ie, was once a fish pond for the Li'i, or Hawaiian royalty. Ao Ao on a loko i'a o Maui is working hard to restore the wall back to its original state. Ko Ie Ie is a cultural masterpiece because it took thousands of people to build such a big structure, and the restoration project is staying true to the original process. No, we use the same rocks that was here that was hand carried by our kupuna, by our ancestors. So we have to dig them out from the ocean and hand stack them the way it once was. Ancestors, or kupuna, played a big part in building and designing this landmark. The fish pond was built by our kupunas, yeah? Our kupunas, uh, I think, vision a tide pool, capturing uh, some fish within a tide pool, knew that they could make a bigger tide pool. And so our kupunas already knew that having a smaller tide pool and creating a large tide pool 
will have enough fish for everybody. A fish pond like this was just one example of how Hawaiians were self-sustainable. Yeah, well, today you talk about uh, sustainability, eh? Us Hawaiians and even our kupunas, uh, it's a way of our life, yeah. So we know the food was in the ocean, and we know how to grow food on the land, you know. So, you know, none of our kupunas um, were uh, graduates of agriculture and uh, uh, ocean science school. It was just a way of their life. Our goal is to restore this ancient fish pond known as Ko Ie Ie, Loko Ia. Um, and it is a royal fish pond. And our goal is to bring it back to its, um, to its normal state that it once did. There are community work days to help with the process and anyone interested can participate with these efforts. Ao Ao no Lokoi O Maui is using it more of an educational tool to show the community what our Hawaiian culture is like and how to live it through the fish ponds wall. Yeah, once we get this wall up, it'll say that we are all united. The future of this fish pond is to be used as a classroom to teach, to, uh, to pass on the knowledge, the iki of our ancestors. When the wall is completed in the summer of 2014, it will be a valuable landmark and continue to be a cultural gem for leisure and education. This is Jalen Obriga for Kamehameha Schools Maui for Hikino. We hope you have enjoyed this special edition of Hikino on the Hawaiian value of Maalama to care for, protect, and maintain. All of the stories we presented were conceived, shot, written, and edited by students like us. Proof positive that when it comes to producing stories that matter, Hawaii students, hiki no. Can do. To watch all six of these special hiki no shows on Hawaiian values, go to pbshawaii.org forward slash hiki no. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.